All right, Judge Bohor, whenever you are ready, I am ready. let's get the show on the road. 408. Mr. Peretti. Here. Mr. Brown. Ms. Zoranen. Yes. Ms. Yeah. Hudson. Mr. Jordan. Here. Mr. Miller. Here. Mr. Stewart. You have four out of seven, so you have a quorum. Okay. Well, thank you, everyone. Uh, this is our last meeting for the holiday. Just to, again, I just want to express my gratitude for everyone making time uh, coming out to these meetings. Um, you know, it's really important. I just appreciate all of that. We have a new, go over the agenda real quick. We're going to go over the minutes, monthly financials, and then we're going to get into what I have been talking about and working with our team. Our fantastic team has been working really hard. Mr. Oldham has been diligently working hard on this and appreciate him and his staff and uh, everyone, facilities, everyone that's here today. Thank you very much for all this work. Uh, we're going to be getting into our building operational cost uh, sort of presentation. Uh, and that's sort of what we'll be looking at, uh, you know, all of our different buildings, sort of, you know, what are the different deltas, what makes them different, what are the different costs associated with that. And again, it's sort of, you know, long term, what I've been thinking and the board has been thinking, well, I can't speak for the board, but what I've been thinking is, you know, as we move forward, uh, you know, through all the different types of uh, uh, processes we have, uh, this is just another tool. You know, we're going to get to a point eventually we're going to have to renovate and, and rebuild buildings. This is going to help us sort of set that up. Uh, you know, what, what makes our buildings different? What are things that, you know, we should be able to compare easily? What are things that we need to be careful comparing? Because different capacities, different types of systems in these buildings, um, and as well as what are the dollars that are going into them um, and what makes them different? Um, it's going to be a very helpful tool for us for district not only being transparent and accountable with taxpayer dollars, but how we make sort of decisions going on in the future. Uh, you know, we are having some conversations. We're not there yet, but we're also looking how, how we can start also looking at sort of what's going on right now completely uh, with our uh, millage that we asked for from the public when it went to deferred maintenance. I know we have operation to fix it, but how can we enhance that further sort of on an annual basis, looking five years down the road, how those mills work. At the same time, our permanent improvement half mill, which is sort of like a capital, again, capital funds only, rainy day fund that we'll be using mostly for deferred maintenance and things like that. But what we're planning on doing you know, with that half a mill, how that looks like in next year, the next five years, whatever it may be, um, to help us make decisions. You know, we have over $400 million, as we all know, in deferred maintenance across the district, and 125-ish million uh, from the levy uh, helps fill that uh, those gaps, but there's, there's still a lot of need in our buildings. And so this operation study that we're going to look at right now is going to look at part of it. In the future, I want to look at the permanent improvement piece the sale of building funds, how those dollars can come in, what we're, we're allowed to use it on it. As we all know, you can't use a lot of these, you can't use these capital dollars for programs, teachers, and things like that. You can use it for buildings, you can use it for fixing things, you can use it for certain items that have a shelf life of five years, so buses and textbooks and things like that. You know, as you know, we, we took a pretty big hit from the state. Uh, we're underfunded, we keep on losing money from the state allowance uh, because we're a cap district. Uh, it's going to make the out years look pretty tough. You know, if we start thinking about, you know, what could, you know, how are we going to deal with these sort of issues? Are there things in there like textbook buys? It's not going to solve everything. Textbook purchases don't roll, so the savings doesn't happen accumulate over years. So like on some things, year one, two, three, four, five, you know, 10 million, 20, 30, 40, 50, you'll see that sort of effect. But when you see other pieces like, uh, you know, a textbook purchase or a bus purchase, it's sort of a one-time hit. Uh, but it does come off uh, those rolls a little bit. Um, so this is going to help us. It's going to help us continue to evolve in our processes of budgeting, uh, of overseeing what's going on in our buildings, what's going on with our budgets, educating the public. Um, you know, school finances is quirky, it's confusing, it's very unfair, it's not equitable, and we need to do the best that we can as a district to be, you know, transparent and let the public know what's going on with their tax dollars, their buildings, their kids' programs. Um, so I am really excited about this presentation. So I will stop there, and uh, that's a pretty big buildup. Uh, you know, <laughs> I'll stop there, and uh, in front of you, I went over the agenda. We do have our minutes right here. So if we could take a look at those, and if anyone has any issues, additions, deletions, corrections, anything at all? 
All right. I just, this is neat that now the video of the meeting is available on YouTube. Yeah. That's, uh -huh. wow. That's Absolutely. Exciting. For so, your viewing pleasure late at night. That's awesome. <laughs> Fall asleep to yeah. it. Well, I, I move that we approve the minutes, or I guess you first asked if there was any corrections. Yeah. yeah. So, I guess I'm moving to approve them. Ahead. If, if there's no corrections, yes. Right. Jody's or Anna moves that we approve them. Do we have a second? No, second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. All right, the minutes are approved. And I just wanted to note, um, Mr. Pretty, that the presentation by the city, um, it might not be reflected in the minutes that you're looking at, but a copy of that PowerPoint, the PDF of that PowerPoint, is online. So if anyone goes online to look at that previous minute, they'll, act, they'll see that. So we do document presentations here by attaching a printout of of any report and so things you you see today that comes from Maurice mm -hmm. uh, we'll scan that in and we'll include that in the minutes so that you know anyone who isn't here and, and enjoys watching the, uh, the the YouTube video mm -hmm. and wants to actually see the documents they can go online and, and pull those down from board docs which is typical for you know, boards or committees and things like that when it does come to minutes you will see the reference to it like you do on page six of eight but not the whole presentation itself in the minutes all right, so now we'll move down to item three, our monthly financial report, and I will kick it off to Stan for that okay. presentation. Thank you. Uh, this is November, um, year-to-date results. Uh, for the month, our total revenues um, on the monthly basis came in about $2.7 million below plan, but we continue to run ahead of plan by about $18.5 million, or about plus 5%. Uh, total expenditures. Uh, ran under plan for the month at three and a half, driving that uh, year-to-date uh, under plan amount uh, to about uh, 16 million under plan, or another five percent the other direction. Um, and the ending cash balance is about 34 million ahead of plan at 224 million for the end of November. Um, Okay. Um, get on the right keyboard, my bad. I'm pressing this keyboard. Right. That too. Uh, when we look at property taxes, there was no change from the previous month. On state aid, came in about $3.8 million under plan. But as you recall, last month I discussed with you that catch up that they did when they began to use the uh, um, most recent data that we've got, current year data, as well as putting in all the um, new features from the from the budget bill. So they caught us up in October, and then so it came in three million under plan. But I think it'll level level out pretty much at, at what we're receiving right now. Um, we did in the plan um, anticipate. Um, uh, I believe that. Well, anyway. That's, we're now at about 1.9 million above plan, or just within 1%. So that's, um, that's pretty good to be you know, right on target uh, there, but again, slightly above plan. The restricted uh, grants, um, the actually, this graph um, is off now that I look at it. I'll have to fix that because the restricted grants came in. Uh, we did receive our first, what we call Q Scooby interest qualified school construction bond interest subsidy. Um, I actually fixed it in the um, discussion. I didn't fix it on this graph, but okay. I'll do that. Uh, but we got a, uh, that receipt in November. We were expecting it in January, so it's just a timing difference. We get two payments a year. We expect the next one to come in May. So that shows up on line 1045. The property tax allocation, um, we received just a little over $6,000 for rollback on manufactured homes. Uh, that doesn't move the needle a lot, but we did get $3.1 in our tangible personal property reimbursement from the state this month. Um, and this is the last significant receipts that we should expect for this calendar year. That brings our year-to-date within 1% of the plan at about 218000 over plan on $20 million in Now, those TPP estimate. reimbursements, are those reflected in the last state budget changes? Yes. Okay. Yeah. On all other revenue line, uh, the interesting thing here is the um, year-to-date investment income is now just over two million on a full-year estimate of about two and a half million. 
So we're going to exceed that, but we always expect that. We don't, we don't overestimate investment income because you never, never truly know what's going to happen. But we know within that whole line, we're going to come in a little bit higher. Um, and then uh, payment in lieu of taxes, we received almost 400,000 this month. That's the second highest monthly amount thus far uh, this fiscal year. And year to date, again, we've received what we almost the full amount that we've anticipated. So that could be timing, but I'm sure we're probably going to exceed that amount as as well. And those uh, payment loop taxes, those property tax valuations. Right. When we reach an agreement outside the border revision, mm -hmm. um, oftentimes the uh, property owners agree to pay either the equivalent of or somewhere in between valuations. And so when you settle outside of BOR, they're typically paying us directly. And just as a side note, the legislature is currently working on legislation that would make this process possibly a little bit more cumbersome for school districts. And Eric, correct me if I'm wrong, but it would create a system where uh, before we go to look for these adjustments, you know, when things are worth more than what they're worth, and we go back to them, it would create a process where we would have to pass a resolution as a board beforehand. Correct. correct. And I guess we have, we're working, we have people that are working, especially Rich Gillis and Dr. Roush with legislators right now. It creates an awkward uh, position for school boards, in my opinion. Uh, I do not want to know who the school district is going for after these things. Uh, you know, I feel like it would create a system where uh, people are going to be like, oh, so you know you're getting ready to, 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 to recalculate this because the land's worth more or whatever it is. Um, and I don't, I don't like a system where uh, people could possibly reach out to board members politically uh, and, and try to sort of uh, influence them. Um, so right now that's in the uh, Ways and Means Committee. They're pretty much done uh, until January. Um, it has not been voted out yet. There has been a lot of opposition to it, but they've also been trying to, to work on it as well. So just a little side note there. And again, I'm sorry. No, that, that, and that just that, relates to schools. Uh, it sounds like county government, it, it, counties, and cities. And, and any, any any political subdivision, it would apply to any political subdivision who wishes to challenge the uh, evaluation. The, the more owner's provision is the fact that you have to pass a separate resolution for each parcel. Not, so within one complaint, you may have hundreds, yeah, hundreds of, of parcels, parcels, right? Mm -hmm. But you have to do one for one resolution per parcel mm. as it is written currently. That's a separate resolution and a separate vote. It comes from a legislator that is has an issue from the hip. He has this very unique issue that happened up in the Toledo area. Uh, there are a lot of myths. He, he's a, he, Stan did a fantastic job, I just want to say that, in his testimony. Um, and uh, the old saying, hit dog will holler, was definitely true uh, with the sponsor of the bill. Uh, Mr. Borg did a really good job uh, acting on behalf of our school district, pushing that back against this legislation. Do you, do you know off the top of your head what's that bill number? 343. Gotcha. Thank you. And it, it's important, and most, quite a few of the folks testifying against it were related to education because we get the bulk of property taxes. Right. So we're the ones that are watching valuations, we're watching sales cases, we're watching requests for reduction. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, the process actually works very well. Mm -hmm. we have county auditors go through and do mass appraisal updates. And then individual taxpayers look at that and assess their own situation, and there's a process for them to challenge that. And um, there's also a process for us on the other side to protect that tax base. And it's working. Um, and the idea is, is that everybody, every piece of property should be valued at its fair market value. And that, this is a process we go through to determine that. And it works. They have a very specific instance where something went awry, and you know, I described it as getting a. I'm going to use it, Eric. I got to use it. Go ahead. It. You get a splinter in your little finger, and you run to the state house, to the state legislature, and they say, "Okay, let's put your whole body in a case." <coughs> and it's like, "Whoa, whoa, time out. Let's let's address this and not go so dramatic to where it prevents us." Um, and and. There have been other attempts to change the process at the Board of Revision, and I would say 
100% of them are disadvantageous to political subdivisions and advantageous to the corporate world that will come in on large commercial properties to seek reductions, and they're attempting to preclude us to fight those. I think that's patently unfair, and I pretty much said so. <laughs> yeah. So, and this isn't an issue where we're going after residential properties. It's all industrial mm -hmm. and commercial. Mm -hmm. we, we don't go after residential properties. And I'm using Mary Jo expression. What is it? Tripping over dollars to pick up pennies, or mm -hmm. pennies or dollars, whatever it oh, is. I like that one. But that's I thought that was great. Spending dollars. But it's, it's again. No one have, this isn't anything to do with residential properties. It's all commercial and industrial. Okay, so that's um, the property tax allocation. I think. Or no, that was all other revenues. Mm -hmm. um, other financing sources, no, no change for this, this month. Um, moving on to expenditures, um, personnel, uh, while we're uh, still implementing the wage and salary increases that should be completed in the month of December. Um, and so we'll have a better look at where we are year to date, but the variance did uh, jump another 2.3 million under plan to 10.2 million under plan. Um, but we expect that that should work itself a, a, a little bit more, less below plan. We would expect this to come in under plan during the year anyway through you know, our conservative uh, forecasting. We don't want to be short on this line item, which is almost 70% of our expenditures. So if we come in, Four or five, six million under on something like that. That's mm -hmm. so. It's where we want to be. Uh, I'll remind you that just if you look at the graph in the notes, uh, December is a three pay month. So you'll see a spike in the plan as well as in the actual expenditures, and that's primarily due to that three pay plan. Mm -hmm. On the purchase services side, um, uh, exclusive of, of charter deductions. Uh, the year-to-date dropped further under plan um, to 3.3 million under plan. Um, the, you know, we get wide swings month to month in purchase services. We're not. Um, I'm not as concerned about it running that much under plan as it would be if it ran over plan. So uh, we just keep an eye on that. The deductions for charter STEM and scholarships um, are right on plan. Uh, the variance is pretty much unchanged year-to-date at about 683,000. Um, within the plan. The most recent data from uh, Ohio Department of Education estimates the total of those deductions at about 184 million. Uh, that's about 7 million less than we have in the plan. Uh, we've got 191 in the plan. So uh, again, we'll be within that appropriation as far as we can tell. And but it is it is a larger amount. I think last year. Our total deduct was in the 178 to 180 million, uh, about 178 million. So while it's up, but we did plan and budget for that. Um, we do anticipate a, a uh, increase in the average monthly deduction um, of about two million more in the latter half of the year than in the first half of the year. So the plan, as you'll see, it rises a bit to about an average of 16.8 a month versus about 14.8 million in the, in the beginning of, of the year. And that again is the difference between using last year's data and then getting current year's data plugged in and um, factoring that in for the latter half of the year. Uh, looking at supplies and materials, I gave you a, um, a lot of information in the um, MDNA for supplies and materials. Uh, the line, although it came in over plan for the month, it continues to run um, about two million under plan year to date. Uh, three supply categories lead the way as, as in previous months, software, supplemental textbooks and fuel. Fuel, and we've talked about that, some of the rationale behind the, the timing issue and fuel, we cover it all up front. And again, there's one of those line items where you don't, you don't want to be over, you'd much rather be under. Um, I've included budgetary data here um, uh, by object for you to take a look at. Um, but there's really no, no other information or further analysis that we've done uh, beyond what we've had in the, the previous months. So um, when we get to capital outlay, though, it's kind of interesting. I took a little bit closer look at this. Uh, the, the variance over plan jumped to about 1.2 million over plan this month. And at 2.1 million expended year to date, uh, we've exceeded what we've got in the plan. And so that kind of caught my eye. 
And I went in and looked, and in the notes you'll see the budgetary data, and I walk you from what was originally appropriated to some of the budgetary adjustments that have been made to a revised budget. And in those adjustments are two things. One, um, carryover purchase orders that came from the prior year into the current year. Those show up as adjustments to the budget because that's how we add them in. But we also have other adjustments go on where someone, uh, some budgets might, uh, some budget units might move money from supplies and purchase services to over to capital outlay. But the point of, of when you look at the budgetary data, the revised budget is about 4.4 million. So we have a, an exposure to 4.4 million, but if they made those budget adjustments, it's come from somewhere else because that's a zero sum game. We've not increased our over, overall appropriations. So we'll go back and take a look and see if we see a, a movement of some budgetary um, allocation out of supplies and materials or purchase services, which can explain why they might run under budget. Um, and it's just a reallocation for, for whatever reason. But I did want to point that out, and this is the kind of budgetary data we, we have our hands on. Um, debt service related, there's no activity yet in, in um, that category. And other <coughs> objects, which is county, county auditor and treasurer fees, um, as a bulk of that, there's been, there's been no real change in that for the month. Other financing uses, um, um, no, no big change. We're still under plan there. So all in all, um, we remain in the same uh, position as we have for the last several months, and that is revenues slightly above plan and expenditures slightly under. And then we got it. We, we understand where those variances are. Thank you, Mr. Port. Do we have any questions, comments, or clarifications? I have a question. Yeah. Um, so. Um, Where would it be reflected, and where might it be reflected here, the um, monies that will come in for the purchase of the, the various buildings that would have been auctioned recently? Because this is all general fund, mm -hmm. it won't be reflected here. That's in a whole separate fund. Okay. So will that, be, will, we, will that be addressed in our later um, analysis? I would say it will be touched on, perhaps mm -hmm. not fully addressed, but it will be touched on. And then I'd like to, I guess what I want to put out there, mm -hmm. just put out there and then see how we address, is um, I think given the, those, the prior sales and these current sales, I think it would be important that we put those up because one of our commitments in um, last year to the community was that we would use those sales to go towards the deferred maintenance. I want to make sure that um, we're being transparent in terms of where those monies are, what they're being allocated to, and if there's any move to put those elsewhere, that, that that's a very deliberate and transparent effort. Okay. We, we, absolutely. And we, we were touching mm -hmm. about this uh, um, on our on my original comments when we started the meeting. Oh, and I apologize. Oh, no, 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 for no, no it's okay. Um, that is what we'd like to see, I think. It, it would really think. benefit us as another tool. What, what are we? What's coming in? You know, permanent improvement wise, what's coming in with the sale of buildings? You know, we're going to have to have some sort of flexibility when it comes to as things break, boilers and roofs. But what is our plan for the year? What do we anticipate coming in? What's with the, the sale of building funds? What do we have now? What are possibilities for the future? Future pro properties and things of that nature. Um, what do we plan on using those dollars for? What do we plan on using you know, the operation fix a dollar is like sort of mapping out a year. The flexibility, again, just because it's hard to, to be completely specific just when things do happen. But, you know, how is this all coming in? Well, and when things happen, we have legislation. I mean, that goes before the board. Mm -hmm. But I think it's, we haven't had these type of capital revenues in this, um, at least in, since we started this newer process, so to this degree. And I think it's important because of the commitment to put it's to to put those into operation, fix it. We want to mm -hmm. uh, make sure that we're uh, we're demonstrating that we're keeping those commitments. I have a chart for that. I, I think you'll like my first chart. Okay, good. That's I, so. I just want to put it out there. I knew it yeah. wasn't a general fund, but I wasn't sure where it would be. My only comment. Any comments? Questions? 
That wraps up item three, our monthly financial report. Uh, now we will move on to the next piece, and that is our building operational cost presentation. Uh, and I will kick it off to Mr. Oldham and Mr. Board. <coughs> Do we have some, we also have some supplemental material as well. I apologize for all the trees. It's going to be up here as well, but okay. I thought it was important that you have them because you can't see it. Oh, thank you. For the older eyes at the table, I appreciate it. I appreciate the information, so <laughs> again, I thought it was important. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Exciting day here. <laughs> thank you. And all these materials are all online as well. There you go. <coughs> These materials are all online as well. They will be. They will be. There's yeah. work. I don't know if you arranged this, but the passive nature of the facility today is really mm -hmm. nice. It, it, it adds to that presentation with the shadow <laughs> casting and whatnot. Well, <laughs> <laughs> and you should have this in the handout, and before Maurice starts, I'll just put a, a perhaps try and put a framework on all the different funding sources that we might contemplate examining over time that play into various um, forms of building maintenance and upkeep um, and renovations and things like the bond issue and operation fix it because um, deferred maintenance can be addressed through a couple of different funding sources and so uh, hopefully try and give you an overview. I started right here talking about sources of funds from four uh, sources of revenue from four different funds. And these are the four funds that we began to examine when we talked about building operational costs. Um, and they are the general fund, the building fund, uh, the building rental fund, and the OSF, uh, I'm sorry, OSFC um, building maintenance fund. And I just show you here the um, um, source of the fund, so general, you know, it's property taxes, state aid, mm -hmm. all those revenue sources that we just talked about. And what can we use general fund monies for? The general operation of, of, of the district, whatever, it's pretty much the least, if no restricted, other than public purpose, fund that we, we've got. So a portion of, of those monies can be used for deferred maintenance. We have um, money in what we call the building fund, 004, that's an accounting designation, and that's where we put the proceeds from the sale of buildings, both prior and the, and the potentially the, the current one coming up. We have a couple of, we have some options there, and with the monies that you're just talking about, the, I think it was about 25 million that we raised for the sale of funds, we need to have a conversation about, do you want to restrict those? You can. Um, there is a statutory restriction that we have to use it on building improvements. Building improvements of useful life, as you mentioned in your opening remarks, of uh, five years or greater. So um, it's more important perhaps to note that we can't use it for selling wages, for instance. Mm -hmm. Actually, the very first thing you have to use sale of building monies on is to retire any debt that might be outstanding for the buildings that you just sold. Well, those buildings, as you know, uh, we're not spring chickens, so uh, there, there, weren't, there wasn't a debt outstanding on that. So then that converts to you need to use it for permanent improvements of, of some form. Now the, oh, oh, the 019, built, we have the building rental fund, so when we um, have outside entities come in and use our buildings, uh, we take those rental fees and we don't put them in the general fund. We put them in a special building um, a rental fund that's it's a separate checkbook if you will mm -hmm. you know funds are basically check when we say a fund that's basically a checkbook we put them over there and we reserve that right now <coughs> um, although it's not restricted but our current practice is to use that for building maintenance figure if the people came in and rented the facility and there's wear and tear it ought to go to to building very small maintenance though. yeah and it's um, I didn't put dollar amounts here, but you're right, that's a small amount. Last but certainly not least is the 034 OSFC Building Maintenance Fund. That's being funded from a 0.5 uh, mil permanent improvement levy, similar to the one that we just adopted in terms of legal and statutory authority to levy it and get it voted in. But we are, because it was for the OSFC projects, 
they mandated that it goes into an 034 fund. And those are new buildings. So when you build a new building, that's the half mill that the state says you, you have um, to work on these buildings. Now, it doesn't matter if you do one building or 25, it's still just a half a mill. Um, so sometimes that half a mill can go pretty far, but it, say, you, say you did 20 buildings at once, theoretically, it would be very stretched. Just, just to put it out there, it would still leave the district with, with you know, issues they were going to have to look at in the long term. Now, where would the permanent improvement that funds be my next from? Question. Yeah, okay. Go <laughs> no, ahead no, go ahead now. So and that was going to be my next comment. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you can compare and contrast that to where the new permanent improvement levy goes mm -hmm. into, and that's you put in an 003, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, is the 003 fund, which is in accounting terms called the permanent improvement fund, mm -hmm. and so that money is being segregated over there. And since this was the building operational cost kind of study. This is where we're taking building operational costs and, and upkeep and maintenance right now. We excluded that permanent improvement fund in this discussion because it's specifically to go to a lot of the deferred maintenance items that we've got or other capital improvements through the budgetary process. We said, well, there's alternative funding for that. So for instance, in the newly approved half mill levy, we're looking at um, using some of that because it's for what you call it, re refresh? Life cycle replacement. Life cycle replacement, that was the correct term. Um, and we're looking at buses, so can we take a portion of that and purchase buses or fund buses out of that, in addition to other life cycle replacement. So life cycle replacement is, is a concept and, and something that we have to do. It's a little bit different than deferred maintenance, mm -hmm. which is we identify deferred maintenance projects, which is the 125, mm -hmm. um, million dollar bond issue that mm -hmm. we're we're working and on and that has that chart with all the the dots on it that said these schools and these projects like plumbing and hvac and whatnot so that's tracked in where are we running that one through <coughs> what fund are we running that one through uh oh four which one 120 but the the oh, three. Uh oh three. Oh, three. Oh, three. Oh, three. Oh, three is also the, running the through pi, the PI and the 0.84 yeah go but they're segregated okay. in Correct. there so you've got Operation Fix-It, mm -hmm. specific projects identified for it. Mm -hmm. You've got the newly approved half mill permanent improvement levy for life cycle replacement types of purchases. And then we did this part for all those funds that we're using for ongoing maintenance and operation and repair that aren't deferred items and ones that we're doing right now, if, if that makes any, any sense. And, and if I could jump in, one yeah. of the questions you was asking. So, um, the operation fixes to think of, of um, I don't hate to use the term renovation, but upgrading or uh, improving our, our systems. The permanent improvement dollars, as Stan already talked about, um, what we're looking at, those, you know those dollars come on a yearly basis and, and they, they carry on. So, for example, we talked about buses. The other thing we're looking at is we're earmarking dollars also to uh, our buildings are grounded to also, along with all the other funds, to also address deferred maintenance and operational maintenance issues as well. Then there's also a piece of that also earmarked to um, uh, technology refresh. So again, there's different categories that's earmarked to, and then we also retract those dollars to make sure we, we capture those dollars where we need to go. So, but that's outside of the daily, I hate to use the term daily, but the regular operations. We look at that as a different Cool, because if you look at it, when we talk about this, our operations, uh, you'll see the funds for operation comes, uh, the bulk of the fund is coming out of general fund. Mm -hmm. And so again, you'll see, but as we move forward, as we talk, you'll see that look look different as we start continuing to analyze and move forward, look at that. I, um, I think as we go forward, I would say, I'd like to see this be, it's capital. It isn't just building operations. It's how, what money comes in and what money goes out for capital issues. And so, like, I think the permanent improvement fund, the, the 003 or the operation fix it, I know we've got the little diagram on the website, but we need to have the equivalent of what we look at in here on that. So, you like know, an, annual, an annual budget of, of yeah. these other And funds. how that goes in and out. I just, there is so much there, and I think that we don't have that, that I would, Look, as we are working through this, 
to have that as part of this, I, I don't view that as separate. I mean, there's operating, but I think this is about the, the capital process. And we've got, there's so much money involved in that, there should be some oversight through this committee. So that, I just put that out there again. I know we're not building Rome in a day, but we have been building for a while here, so I'd like to see Rome pretty soon, so. We, and it, absolutely, I completely agree. And it was a topic that we discussed when we had our meeting about this. Um, and some of the things I want to see, I, exactly what you're saying. Yeah. You know, looking at it on the annual basis, again, mm -hmm. you know, what, what do we plan on doing? What do we plan on doing for the next five years? You know, that sort of aspiration look. Uh, but looking at these other funds, the PI, the, the you know, what goes into 003, the PI and 0.84, um, how, as well as, you know, the sale buildings, you know, sort of separate little budgets that could be all sort of wrapped up together, but some sort of yeah. and look I, at that on an annual basis. I would say, as a, like buses, as an, just an example, put that out there. We have to, you know, having a, um, you know, we talk about Operation Fix It, but then some of those dollars go to bus refresh. We have to do bus refresh. But right now, like, we're in the center of the smart city universe. And so we need to also be transparent about how we're we spending money on transportation, what do we need in the future, and it, like we have to be able to talk about what we need and describe that and then how much money that goes to and when we put money there that it doesn't go to something else that's a facility issue. And so, I mean, all of that together, I just think it's a, uh, important, It'll, it, would, it would help seed important conversations. So. Um, just put it out there. But we have a lot of stuff to go through here, so I don't want to detract. Fantastic. Thank you. Can we bring the spreadsheet up? Okay. I know our new members right now are looking at this and saying, oh my goodness. So <laughs> I, I started Stan. What we're going to, you have the document from, he's going to put the spreadsheet up yeah. um, on the uh, screen. Um, but just to, to piggyback, and I agree uh, on the conversation of tying it in together, I do agree it all ties together. So I, I just want to put that out there. So the information we're looking at here today, I just want to uh, clarify, uh, we're looking at and we're analyzing where we're at, where we're going, and how we take that to move forward as an operations of the organization. So the information you have here is looking at over um, the FY16 numbers, FY17 numbers, and then we use that to analyze how do we move forward and how we have been moving forward 18. So when you look at 18 numbers, you have all that tied into it, but those are dollars we actually didn't have as we move forward. So as we come back, those will be information we bring in. So I just want to put that out there. So what we looked at, again, is things that we do know. The first document you have um, is just definitions of object codes. In our it's just from the Uniform School Accounting Program. And so when we looked at the dollar, Stan just talked about the sources of fund, 001 general fund. He talked about um, uh, the 004. In this case, it's called building construction. In our terms, we call it um, sale of real estate. But just, you know, so it's but the proper term. And then you look at um, um, the 034 funds. Uh, again, that's the half mill fund. And then you look at the 019, uh, and that fund is what's traditionally used as um, sell uh, rental, rental fees. The definition you have for you, the reason why I want to give you that, because what I wanted to do is look at the numbers. It all says the same thing, but I want to look at it in different ways, and then how we can dig deeper into the numbers. And so what you would look at, you're going to hear me talk about OPU, which is the high level of the department, and then we're going to look at the object codes, and so we dig deeper, and that goes in where are the money going, and how is it being spent in those particular categories. So on, on page uh, one of the, of the table that you see, that's just a recap, and many of them you might see duplications. When I say duplicate, like the, the information in the graph that shows it. I just wanted to look at it from different ways. But when you look at this general fund, the first sheet on, on page one at the bottom is called body fund and my building type. What I want to look at and just be able to share with you how we look at what's going into the general fund, and then we look at it by department, where the funds are going to. So for example, general fund FY18 was 18.2, FY17 was 20.5. But then you want, I wanted to look at and share with you by department. When we talk about department, I'm talking about those areas that are not uh, school-based buildings. 
for example, like this building here, like uh, non-school sites. And then elementary schools is self explained elementary, high school, and middle school. So I wanted to show where those general fund dollars are going. And so when you look at that, it just give you a breakdown. So our general funds for um, the total, both fiscal year was 38.7, but I'll just share with that. And then if you look at building constructions, there really wasn't a lot of funds there. At, the, at this particular time, which our practice is changing and will be changing, but at those particular time, those dollars was really used because we technically didn't have a capital outlay budget for when we had special projects. For example, if we had a school that was moving from school to A, we need to do some work in, we would use funds out of that in certain cases. Or, and then when you look at 019, same similar situation, sometimes funds would be used. For example, one project in particular, uh, we had a particular school need tennis course uh, re refresh and we was able to use funds here to refresh. So again, but again, as we move forward and as we look at these different funds coming in all time together, that program will change and that's why it all ties again. So that's why I say I agree. So I just wanted to share how those funds are broke out. Uh, in the next, we can pass just there was a graph that shows you what it looks like in a graph format. So again, I, I just really, I thought it was important to talk to you through it opposed to just showing graphs. This next uh, um, um, table, which talks about fund type and object codes, what I wanted to do is take those same uh, object, uh, those fund codes, 001 general fund, 04, and then on down the line, and just share with you where those dollars go to. For example, when you look at general fund, you see that 410, which is professional services, is, a, is, is one of the line items where fees come out. So in that area, that's what comes out. Professional services, property services. Property services is one of those um, line objects in the operation that's used a lot. Property services is utilized um, as it states in definition, but in our case, it's utilized for those services out of, of, um, that's not paid for our staff. For example, give you an example. In buildings and grounds, um, if we have to outsource some uh, HVAC system to a company, that's where that, those funds will come out. And then you look at repairs and maintenance. Those are if we outsource and there's repair uh, equipment or we have to pay for those repairs, come out of that so we can track those. And then if you look at also electricity, water, and gas, it's really the biggest factor that comes out of general funds. And then the other uh, object code that's used a lot um, for uh, departments, of particularly building grounds, is 570. 570 is that code item, uh, not only for buildings and grounds, but in operation, because we're looking at all operations, excluding salaries here. Mm -hmm. um, you look at, like for custodial services, our waste haul of services mm -hmm. come out of that. So you look at that services, and that encompasses um, those dollars that we utilize. And then you also you have safety, security, and those types. But it'll be another talk deeper. But I wanted to share with you and I want to focus in on that, um, that <coughs> general fund section of it. And then I wanted to share which how it works in each school. And then I'm going to talk about how it helps with our decision making as we move forward. So, okay. So the next one, again, I, I, and again, my reason for looking at it in different ways, because I think when we're looking at it in different angles, it just gives me, what well, I think, a different way of looking at how we can look at business here. This next one talks about the building type. Again, it's just, we're gonna, I'm not going to really go over this one again. It's the same information that was on the spreadsheet before, but it's more concise. We can see it uh, side by side on where we're at and what the dollars look like um, from elementary, middle, and high school. This page five, the fifth one, which has a lot of documents um, that you have before you, that document has all the information in one document. That's the fifth one. That's the one by fund type by object code, by OPU. Oh, yeah. That's what I was This gets to the point of the question of where is it going out and going in, and it digs deeper. And so, for example, uh, the other ones, the page you looked at showed the general fund code, uh, the fund code. It showed the object code. And then this goes deeper. This shows the general fund code or the code, fund code. It shows the object code. And then it digs deep and shows the OPU number, which means the site, the school, the place is coming from. Mm -hmm. and so this gives you an opportunity to look at, and it's still broken around by physical year 16, 17, as well as um, <coughs> by uh, elementary, middle school, high school, and department. And so, uh, and then you can see, I can look, for example, if you look on the first page on the 420, you see Beach Golf High School 004 on the, on the 420 property services. <coughs> it's not a lot of dollars in property services there. When you look at this, you will see uh, the total spend uh, for property services is uh, 5.4. But when you look at the department, 5.3 of that is coming for department, means those dollars are, uh, are out of buildings or the department operations. The reason why you see those dollars at the school level, they still budget something. There's some items or operational things that the school pays for, yeah. uh, for example, maybe like um, fire retardant for curtains. And there's some things such as th that. So that's why we still capture that because that then comes into the uh, uh, 
total cost. Mm -hmm. But the biggest fund you would see in this is electric uh, utilities. So again, this, I won't bore you with, but this is all the different schools and all the areas that, that's paid. And so again, I wanted to dig deeper. Even though it talks about that in the other pages, this is where we can dig deeper and see uh, where those funds are coming out and where those funds are going. So, now the, the next one talks about, and that will be your page six, that's utilities. You look at our utilities, again, um, utilities as a whole uh, for FY16 was 12.8 million, 12.9. FY17 was 13.7. So, but then you look, it breaks it down by how we can look at it from um, department, elementary, high school, and middle school. And so as we look at this information, uh, we look at it from different lenses and operations so you know. One of the things we're looking at is, is we look at um, what's the age of the building? How is that impacting our utilities? We look at it from square footage and then we'll talk about that further. But then we look at it and take this information and as we move forward, we're looking at ways that we can be more effective and efficient, for example, by looking at how can we implement some behavior um, programs to be able to help reduce energy costs, but also looking at is there, are there energy programs out there we can look at to try to help reduce those energy costs as well. And so again, all of those things, just so we understand, ties back into um, our maintenance of daily maintenance, our PI dollars, our operation fix it, because we have to uh, um, marry those things together, because it impacts, one impacts the other. So again, I, that's why I just want to make sure, I just want to see, keep closing that gap, that we do agree that it all closes together. Um, so this next, I just want to look at electric, uh, this is page seven, at the bottom of your page. What I want you to do is give you a snapshot. The page five that I show you gives you cost of everything in the district from operation from elementary, middle, to high school. But I wanted to share with you, as I look at electric, I wanted to focus on the high school. Um, and this would be most seven on there. On the high schools, and I want to look at the electric cost per uh, square foot by the high school by age of the building. And so the first section that you see here is anywhere from year age, age of a building from one to 10 years old. The second section is from 26 to 50 years old. And then the section next is 51, 75, and uh, 76 to, um, to 99. And what you'll notice in this, our uh, Linda McKinley building, um, the, it's in that category of one to 35, and its cost per square foot is about 1.5 and 1.6. And so again, um, what you'll find too, I want to share with you, in, in many of our buildings, um, when we look at this, we look at all the costs together. We have many of our buildings, just so when you look at, for example, like a Fort Hayes campus, we have multiple meters at those buildings. So when you look at cost per square foot, it could be also because of the multiple meters at the building. For example, like a Marion Franklin High School, uh, that particular school has a meter at the school, meter at the uh, sports facility. So then you have two different meters. So, and for this, we put it together and we, we track it from that perspective. Um, but again, what we look at, we try to look at these numbers and we try to study to see, uh, oh, not try, we do, to see if there's any uh, peaks or anomalies that we need to look at to see, okay, what's happening? Uh, do we see any increase or spike in the, in, in the uh, dollars? We look at it not only from a yearly basis, but also from a monthly basis to see if there's any uh, tweaks or any things that we need to do from an operation standpoint. Now, one of the things we do clearly understand previously um, as an operation, I think it's important to say, um, because of our funding, we was really in a more of a fixed break mode, if you will, because of the funding. Um, but now we're moving that approach, and we have been, since uh, Director Hood has been here, is moving from um, a preventive maintenance um, um, standpoint. Because we truly believe if we put a system placed by uh, PM and the, the items, we have a longer life. And I, I like to attribute it to you driving a vehicle. Um, you change your oil to, to prolong the life of your vehicle. Um, if you don't, you wait till something starts knocking, then you end up in a better, worse state. So we've been trying to look at, yes sir? Go ahead, finish your sentence. So we've been looking at um, different things. Of, for example, we, we've identified priorities uh, in our work order system. Uh, when items come in, we have a priority, how we respond to that. And then we're looking at tracking how our response time in that. And then also we're looking at our partners, how they can work with us to be able to, to service those items as well. So uh, this, this uh, per square footage analysis is really great, and I'm just wondering, uh, when you are, are analyzing this data, what are you comparing the numbers to? Is there a, a uh, industry best practice standard that you're comparing it to? There, there are, and as we haven't looked from that perspective uh, at this point, because we just started, we're looking at, from our internal system, I'll tell you the reason why. 
Um, we have a, there, there are industry standards. We have some uniqueness here because when you compare, we got to look at the totality of the building. And we understand in our facilities, for example, when you look at the age of our building, we have buildings that uh, may have single pane windows as opposed to double pane. So we got to look at all those analyses. But once we gather all that information, we will start comparing uh, industry analysis. But there are standards out there, uh, for example, uh, what should you have um, budgetary-wise based on our size to maintain the building. One of the numbers we, I think we just talked about recently, NSDP, based on our uh, cost replacement value and based on the industry standard, we should be actually budgeting about uh, $88 million per fiscal year for maintaining our buildings. And we're nowhere close to that. But I'm just saying, so when you look at that, based on those numbers, we've got to look at what are our, our best approach to be able to address and tactics. But we will be comparing those. And there's many avenues we can. We have the Council of Great City Schools, but the industry standards and those. Right now, we're gathering that information from this perspective, figuring out how it ties into our plan, as well as how we tie it into our, our preventive maintenance, how we tie it into operation fix it. Because the other key to it, as we look at these items, there's a lot of upgrades and things we're doing. For example, um, electrical panels we're looking at now. We're hoping that has an impact on where we're at. Uh, when we look at just something so simple as adding a vestibule at the entry point of the doorways, is a barrier to keep other um, wind coming into the door, which has an impact on other factors. So there's a lot of uh, factors that goes into that. But yes, we will be comparing those information. Can I have a follow-up on that. Uh, so the square feet is of just the building that you're taking. But when you say there's a second meter, that might be the ball field. So then those, that would be an additional cost, but there would be no square footage attributed to that. Is that At this correct? point, I mean, we have to Unless go. Unless there's a building there, I correct. guess. Okay. Correct. So anybody who has a lighted field is going to have a higher rate than somebody that's really just the building and maybe a small playground or something. And and in case and so what we and most of those will be high schools and so we look at that from the high school comparison, mm -hmm. um, and that's how we we, we look okay. at that. Mm -hmm. okay. Let me just throw this up. This is at this point it's obviously work in progress, but this is a result of numerous iterations through the data. First thing, we, because we're using accounting data um, here, so we pulled all this accounting data, so like Scott and I put something together and we share it with Maurice and his team, and we go, well, that doesn't look right, and they'll go, ah, oh, yeah, that's Fort Hayes. They've got this going on. And so then they took this and went back and looked at the data and went, okay, we need to, we need to modify this, break it out a little bit differently. So this is, we're still making cuts and runs through the data and giving it that kind of just common sense yeah, smell test does it, yeah. does it look right. Uh, because data was collected to um, answer budgetary questions, not necessarily from, you know, not the accounting data to answer an operational this is a tool behavior to, question. See, see, this is like a tool for us to start to understand the behavior, mm -hmm. the why. And I think when we get to gas, when we get to that, that's a good example uh, of behavior and, and why there are differences. And we'll be able to explain that in a second. But mm -hmm. those are really good examples. So, are we talking about building behavior or yeah, building behavior? Program? Yeah, this okay. will this will allow us okay. to understand. You know, why is this the way that it is? Mm -hmm. You know, okay. why is this square footage? You know, the cost higher than from this building to that building? Mm -hmm. It'll allow us to start to understand. You know, as a committee, but as a district and internally, you know, what are the behaviors behind this? And then as we look forward, like we were talking about moving forward, you know, with these, what can we do to address those behaviors, replicate those behaviors, what are best practices and things like that. Yes, Ms. Smith. Thank you. Um, does the data on what the data be able to tell us which of these schools might be used for like summer school or other, um, you know, periods when, um, of high use yeah, when the school district is kind of like closed or something might be open during spring break or something like that. So therefore there also might be an increase in usage during that period. The data we have here we pull is strictly from the numbers. Those are, again, this was beginning level. We can dig as deep as need be. For example, that would be another um, point to look at, um, whether it's building use or uh, what does the numbers look like compared to um, summer school. Um, but at this point, this is just looking to the overall, because even deep, deeper than that, we can also start looking deeper of what does it look like a steam boiler compared to a water boiler. Correct. Um, so it, it's, it's just so deep you can go. I have to share with you, was working on this and um, was trying to figure out how to display this on the screen and it was very difficult. 
I'm up to 24 pages. I'm thinking this is a lot. Uh, and this, this is just touching, and I thought this is just touching, looking at the, all the information I showed you is all the numbers. This now I'm trying to look at it individualized. When I started even bringing, I could have took electric down even further. Right now I'm at three slides or three documents for each one from electric, gas, and water. See, that's nine. So if I took it to the middle. So I was just trying to give you an oversight. But our goal is to figure, to take this information and start digging deeper and looking at how do we look and address those issues. We, we're talking about electric, we're talking about gas, we're talking about water. But from an operational standpoint, we're talking deeper than that. We're talking about even when we look at buildings that's um, on our building use and different things, how's it impacting our other supply costs, out of the 570 line, for example. When we have, a, uh, if you look at our, our, uh, one of our sites, East High School, which is heavily used for building use, how does that operate, impact the operational costs for us, uh, supplies, paper and plastics, um, toilet paper, and those type of things, and how do we tie that in there, and how do we capture that, and what does it look like? Um, so again, this is really, I was trying to stay at a high level, but our intent is to dig deeper and have it as a tool for operation um, for to help with decision making, but also to also make sure um, that we're able to um, streamline our processes, but also get the best return on investment for what we're doing. So, I mean, we, I have many meetings coming up now, um, it's not to your question, but coming up, um, looking at ways, and we've had many meetings, but what is the best approach um, for ways to attack those um, energy issues of low-hanging fruits? Um, are there ways, opportunities also to look at our lighting if we change those over, less heat coming off the light to be able to help to reduce uh, the carbon footprint. So there's many other things that we can look at from that perspective. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna move on to um, the next one, which will be, be your page nine, uh, which, is, which is again the tables. I'm not gonna really go over this, the graphs because it's the same information. I just had it from my, my point of view. Page nine is looking at the high school again. Same information, but I wanna look at and, and categorize the high schools by square footage. The, the first one you looked at was by age of building. This one is looking at how does it, how do they rank, or how they look, uh, what buildings fall in that category uh, of, of, of square footage. So you look down, it just shows you the same numbers, but I just want to be able, from our standpoint, to look at those numbers from that perspective. I think the one that's really more important is the next one, you look at the actual dollars. Um, this is looking at electric dollars in the high school level. And if you look through here, you'll see, for example, uh, and I just want to point out Columbus Iota, which is at the bottom, which is OPU 7.26. I just want to point that out only because when we get to it, I want to bring it up again. 7.26, Columbus Iota has a different um, um, heating system. Um, it's one of our newer buildings. So if you look at the electric, uh, it's uh, 71,000 first year, 66 uh, in FY17. And that particular building is a ground source heat pump, heat pump system. I bring that up because when we get to gas, you'll see our gas bill for that was only $400 one year and $600 the next. So again, when we're talking about looking at this data and then we're looking at systems, it helps us also when we move forward, what is the best system, what are the best, how we can move and do business and take care of those issues that we have. So I just want to bring that up to you. So this is just looking at the actual dollars that are spent um, to maintain those particular sites and those buildings. And what we're looking for in this is, are there anything that sticks out in anomalies? And so what this information brought together, my, me and my team though, we're, we're constantly look and study this and see if there's opportunities. To and that's what I, what I think we would see sort of in the future, you know, as we look at these other types of budgets, like we were talking about MJ, um, could capture some of these things as you're looking into the future. You know, let's put this sort of system here that would be presented to this committee sort of on, you know, on, a, on an annual basis, you know, alongside of all the deferred maintenance pieces. But maybe one year we're going to try, I, I don't know anything about geothermal at all. <laughs> but, or what the opportunities are. Are there other opportunities? And I think that would be something that we could, you know, use, you know, as an opportunity. And, and I agree. I, I think what's important, I mean, to me it's a show and tell. Uh, I think it's important for us from the standpoint when we uh, have these projects that we've completed and show where I think it's important to tell you what, give you a snapshot of some of the projects that's been accomplished. Um, because some things, uh, for the naked eye, you may not see that has a major impact. Uh, on the entire operation of the organization. And so I think it's, you know, we bring that information back and be able to share. Uh, these are some of the things that we've accomplished during this particular time period, whatever that time may be. Um, so you can see that. And there's different types. I mean, there's the capital side idols, mm -hmm. uh, but then there's uh, break fix things that you may not see, yeah. uh, but it's things that help keep the uh, facilities up and running that it's important to share that as well. Yeah, thank you. I was going to say, you're seeing a lot, much of what he's doing in drilling down uses data 
that is not captured in the accounting system. So when we ran it, we said down we look, okay, this is what our accounting data, the standard information that we get out of our accounting system, which was designed to answer accounting questions. And then we said, okay, well, we need square foot. So we have to go back and add that as trailer data on all those budget accounts. And then we say, well, square foot, how about age? So we add age. And, and so we're, at, we're adding, kind of add, we don't capture that up front, we're adding that to help better explain that data. So there's been a lot of work to add, I mean, it's the phrase metadata or trailer data to the existing data that we already have out of the accounting system. And why are we using the accounting data? Well, because that's the dollars and cents. I mean, that's the checkbook. Mm -hmm. The checkbook's going to say, we just spent $5 million, and you want to know everything we do that has to add up to $5 million, whether we break it down into three categories or 303 categories. It all needs to add up. So that's what we start with, that basic database, and then add trailer data. And, and as he said, we don't have different electric systems in there. Um, you know, different types of systems, mm -hmm. whatever it is. We don't have those in there yet, but uh, that's part of the process of building. But here we are in December, and this is how far we've come. So it, it's a lot, of, a lot of work to just work through that huge accumulation of data that we've got. Um, I was just wondering, if, if, contemplating is, um, you know, in the next stages also showing, you know, kind of, building capacity compared with these, you know, so that we could look at like the high schools and then so where are they in terms of... She added of another field. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, it's 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 where is it? Which one? Oh. Go back. Well, uh, go, go over. Go to the... Go to the... That's a count detail. That's what you can just... All the information we're pulling from. Yes. Oh my lord. That's, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, all, all those things you're speaking of, we, well, we're pulling from that. This is yeah. just what we yeah. have. For example. Oh no, it's fine. Have, I didn't mean no, to I got you. that. I just was. I just thought you know if you look at it's it's yeah. kind of like carrying sure, that yeah. you're thinking about which I which is fantastic. You know efficiency of service per building, and you know what I I'm thinking in terms of planning and next stages on facility planning. Um, you know, if we're spending X amount on one high school, but it's at a half capacity, you know, are we look then our you know administration, other folks looking at what are we doing regionally to maximize that spend, mm -hmm. um, and what are other alternatives we have with that? But we haven't had to date. I haven't. We haven't had a tool like that. So for that kind of discussion. And the other thing is important, as Dr. Stanford mentioned, I've been poor for this, comparing what is the cost per pupil. Yes. Um, and again, so I mean, there's so many different avenues we can go down, and that ties into that building uh, yes. st uh, staffing and all that. So again, I didn't um, want to go quite that far yet. Well, <laughs> and that's why I want to get a stop point. I, I have to tell you, as I was pulling it together, I, I struggled a little bit. Had four that I deep that I should I go, and, and so again, I, I want to share. But again, still looking at those things and how uh, can we look at that? Because what it ha starts now is how do we compare? What is the cost here compared to here? What are we doing? And what does it look like compared to those other standards? I mean, it's just a lot of different things right. comparison that we can look at. He had me pull up this sheet and up to column O, so column A through O comes out of the accounting system. And then we started to add building type, high school, middle school. The created an actual OPU name so we could display that so you, you didn't have to look at the number and go, what's 096? Yeah. Uh, we added all the square footages, the 16 enrollment. We calculate dollars per square foot, dollars per pupil, different utility companies that are providers, whether or not they have AC and what type, what age group are they in. <laughs> um, we categorize, we group the sizes, um, what fund is the expenditure out of, what fiscal year is it, um, and, and we're going on and on. And that's why I'm saying we're adding these fields as a question, because we, we sat around and said, well, what might they ask? How about this? How about that? And again, we're not collecting it that way. That would be somewhat of an accounting nightmare. But on a day-to-day, -day, you know, purchase order check issuance process. But we are going back, and they look at it and go, "Okay, let's 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 add these descriptors, and then go look at the graph, and it's going to pop out even more questions as we look at it." So just that just gives you an idea of, and we only have. 15,000, 1,560 lines so far of data to, and that's just 
one fiscal year. So our internal auditor has a great smile on her face. I don't know whether to be <laughs> happy or scared. I'm making a ball. And, and so again, uh, the other thing I want to point out before I go further, just because Sandy just talked about this, just so you, you'll be aware of it. Is we didn't, I didn't want to give it to you because I didn't want to muddy the waters. But I think this is important. You also went back to utilities, uh, particularly electric. In the district, we, we actually, many people don't realize, we have some schools on um, city power, and we have some schools on AP power. And so again, you know, and so we, have, we, we deal with both. And so that's another um, data point we can compare and look at as well. So again, there's many, digging in data points we have to look at to be able to compare and contrast. I would just, I just Please, a absolutely. quick comment. You know, so some of this is, uh, I think, is what do we know is available so we can talk about planning or like building use or like larger, you know, the need, what's it going to take to air condition everyone, for example. But some issues, you know, we, I think, for our, this level or for the board level is, um, you know, Maurice, what can we do to reduce air conditioning, you know, or reduce expenses? You know, I would, I would like that you have the data available to look at that. Although I don't feel it's my call to say better to use gas versus electric versus, you know, um, that's granular level. I don't think that's at, at our level, but um, from a governance perspective. Mm -hmm. So I just, I, like finding a spot where we're getting enough that we comment on it, but not too much that we're, trying to micromanage. Well, I think we also should talk about clean energy alternatives, if this is a long-term plan, you know, whether it's wind well, no, or solar, yeah. or you mentioned geothermal. So, mm -hmm. I mean, this is the time to get that on, you know, the wish list. Because upfront expenses over time will pay off. But yeah, doing it all We're in. We're going to need a bigger boat. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well and that's I think what you're going to see that's interesting about the expenses Maurice mentioned what the you asked about industry standard and what did you say we should be dedicating to? It's about 88 million. 88 million. The half mill levy generates 4.4. Mm -hmm. Now I'm not saying that we do everything through the PI levy. I'm just suggesting to you that when you think about everything gets converted to millage, um, that's a big number that we're dedicated. And I was thrown. Uh, Bad. I, I guess my eyes were open. Alex did a presentation to NSPD, and I hope I have the number right. Two things I heard Alex say. First of all, we have 8.8 .8 million square feet. Actually, nine. We'll just call it <laughs> 9 million square feet. Today, we were talking to a developer, big company, develops properties all over Southern California, and they had under management 7 million. 7 million. We have almost 9 million square feet to take care of. And you have something like, what's it called, a facility condition index or something that's an industry standard. And in order to keep our buildings at the index where they should be, we'd have to repair, replace, renovate, build, tear down, do something, construct, okay? Two buildings a year, forever. Which then explains to me why when you drive by Ohio State, you see cranes around all the time. We could be under construction for two buildings a year, forever. And it's just, that's, we have a huge physical plant that requires a huge investment, and we're just beginning to identify all of the different needs and, and explain that to everybody. The volume of that, I was, I was amazed at, uh, you know, because I didn't have those numbers off the top of my head until Alex shared them, it was a pretty impressive presentation. I, I would say, Stan, I think the other piece to that is, is that we've not really evaluated how much of that physical plant, like, needs versus wants. You know, mm -hmm. we have a physical plant right now that is X. How much do we really need based on our, our functions, number of students, that sort of thing. And, and, you know, we have, say we have X number of high schools, but if they're each at you know, 50% capacity or, you know, ex if, if some are at lower capacity than others, then that's about, okay, we are, we have way too many responsibilities and very few resources, so how do we reallocate? And we, that, I think that is the, the uh, for me, that's the primary value 
uh, in addition to making decisions on uh, existing spend. And it's interesting when you say that because it, it, it would be, I think, um, value added if we could figure out to if we could figure out a way to analyze that impact on academic uh, programming and academic services mm -hmm. right for our right. students. Mm -hmm. oh, more trailer data. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll just add the the layer up that maybe we're a big enough customer to influence the Columbus City Electric to look into other generation. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. that, Absolutely. Uh, that there's, there's more ways to make mm -hmm. this happen. To save the earth, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So there, I would say, maybe say, there are other policy considerations, like what I'm talking about is a policy consideration tool as well. So, you know, the Finance Committee wouldn't address which buildings you, you know, what we do with buildings, but it's a tool that can be put together if the board says we want to know about energy use or um, building compat building use, et cetera. It provides the data to do that. Absolutely. And this committee can say, yes, that's, you have the elements you need to make that analysis. Mm -hmm. So, so the next. Uh, oh, Stan, take that slide down. <laughs> no, I just, I, I just thought you'd like to see all the. Data I know you're trying to say thank you. Look, at all, look at all the data that we work with. Oh Very my gosh. Exciting. So, uh, where am I going here, boys? Which slide? Water. Mo thirteen. So, the next free slide is that that kind of boys talk about the water and sewage, and what I try to do to stay consistent, and then again, this is looking at high schools, to look at uh, square footage and age of building. Um, so again, those numbers are what they are, but I think what I really like to focus on is the last one, is the cost. Um, so I want to turn really, that's uh, 13, uh, but I want to turn to actually 17, page 17, because again, those are, those are just square footage we're looking at, just looking at from different lens, but I think what's important is the cost. And so when you look at this um, for the water and sewage, it just gives you an idea of um, what the costs are at these particular sites. And so again, um, you know, when we look at it before, this time I wanted to put it in open <coughs> order, but as we dig deeper and broader again, I would definitely put it in order of, of cost, high to low, and then start digging deeper on the whys. But I just want to give you an idea of what those costs are. Mm -hmm. And all these dollars we're speaking of, the dollars that ties back into the original document that I shared with you, that shows the general fund, and when I share with you how um, uh, the, big, the biggest bulk of those general fund dollars are coming out of the department. And the reason why I said department, th those bills are paid, if you will, out of the builders and grounds or one budget, if you will. But then when we look at it, we also to track it if, in that page five document I gave you by school so you can see what the costs are at each one of those schools. So that's why you see it listed both ways. And then the last set of groups of uh, information is looking at um, gas. And again, I wanted to look at it as I stated before early age of group of buildings as well as by the size of the building. It just gives you what it, the gas cost looks is by um, looking at the, those particular factors. And then the last page is at 23. 23 is I think it's what I want to share with you that I look at the cost. That's what I was talking about earlier at the bottom on 23 where you look at 726 billion so over. Um, based on the system that we have, um, that gas cost was 646 and 466. So you're looking at system high impacts, but again, we, as we look at that, we want to look at uh, the electric side or uh, the, uh, uh, the water side, see if there's any other impacts. So we will, again, look at it in totality. And this is looking at the operation cost. But again, I think, as I stated earlier, it all ties back into the total operation of the district when all those other funds come in, how do we look and manage that? And as we move forward in FY18, we realize based on the state on the levy promise, uh, our goal is just also, as we continue to move forward in this, to tackle those deferred maintenance issues and looking at those funds that's been earmarked for that, as you notice, see the funding now, there's other funds we haven't utilized before for that and being able to address and track that, and that's what our, we're, we're looking to do. So this is just, again, I wanted to give a snapshot um, of where we're at, where we've been pulling together, and just share, you, share that information with you. Wow. Well, I mean, this is fantastic. Everybody. Now this data, pardon me, this data is live, so if you'd like to run some other pivot charts, we could we could do that for you and dig. So, so where do we go next to have this be um, 
So it's a lot. How do we boil it down then so that it is uh, a operation fix it? It's what's done here, and then B um, in a way in a manner that begins to be at like finance committee level. So really, I see. I kind of hear yeah. from you know how PI budget sale building. I, I see two two things from what I would leave here that I would look into. One, it's, it's clear that we need to bring together um, budgetary data for all of these funds and lay them out. Um, we may have to regroup them. Numerically, they may not fall the way we think. And you just described how, how we think. Deferred maintenance and the operation fix it, the new PI levy, the ongoing stuff, um, and and just bring that budgetary data in. That's going to be at a different level of, of detail than some of the additional questions you asked here that are being generated from an operational, at least what I'm hearing from an operational cost, when you talk about capacities now. We heard, oh, okay, well, that's a variable. It's kind of like we need to hear what variables do you think we ought to be looking at this data? You know, we thought age and square footage and dollar per pupil was great, but you just mentioned, well, how about capacity? So we look at buildings that are um, at 90% capacity and above, those that are 70 to 90% capacity. Is there any uh, expense differential there? And then I'm, then I'm trying to conceptualize in my head. The next question would be, well, if, what if we took two buildings at 50% capacity and somehow put them together? not addressing uh, academic issues, but just kind of the math, does it make more sense to run one building at 100% rather than two at 50? Intuitively, I think we're all kind of going, eh, probably. But I don't want to usurp a process of, I, I don't want anybody to come That's, out of here and saying, well, yeah. I don't want you to draw the wrong conclusions from that no. analysis, but it would be good. To, so, it's a so, it's so a, the first it's a thing piece. was, Budgetary data across the board for all of that information. Mm -hmm. Second is getting some other metrics that you might want to hear about so that we can go back and, and add that trailer data to all this financial information mm -hmm. and make those comparisons. Because again, these are comparisons that made sense to Maurice, made sense to me, but it may not answer questions you I mean, it, it may, and for us as a board, it's going to not only from a lot of these pieces, it's going to help us make decisions, you know, as we go forward. And like we said, obviously, you know, we have a lot of needs, you know, what we'd like to get to a point in the future as a board where we can put something on, on the levy again for facilities, but it's going to come, you know, what, what do we need, what don't we need, what's that capacity, you know, how are we going to spend our dollars the best? You know, these buildings say, you know, building X is, you know, 45, 50% at capacity with students. Um, you know, it's an older building. It's, it's you know, those are the sort of decisions that we'll have to make in the future when it comes to, you know, I'm just going to say it, when you consolidate and close down things that you don't need, but you also get to build nice new things uh, that are better for the school district. So we can actually have a school district with buildings that are the right parameters for the growth that we're seeing. Because, um, you know, we have a system right now, because it's the way the schools are funded, that's clunky, it's older, you know, it's a remnant of the past, and we're gonna have to look in the future and make those tough decisions, you know, and, you know, they're good decisions. They, you know, we, we need to have those honest conversations uh, with the public, and this is what I see as us laying out are those tools for us to make those decisions in the future. Uh, not only, you know, if, if we do plan to go to consolidate X and Y for, for multiple reasons, uh, but then rebuild something here, you know, it, it's going to make our district better. We're going to have, it's going to be a better running district on the GRF side, on the capacity of the buildings and the programmatic end. Uh, these are tools that are going to help us make those decisions in the future. I'm done. <laughs> I feel like I just, we should apply. I'm just gonna, I'm just, I, no, I was just no, going to say please. that it, it gives me a lot of comfort as a, as a person who doesn't live in this world every day that good professionals like you all are looking at it with this kind of lens and 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 detail of this. I mean, data geeks love this stuff. Mm -hmm. But for all of you to, to take the time and, and understand it that way, I think, is a, I think that's a big deal and, and the people of Columbus ought to you know, recognize that that's a big deal. I think so that's kudos to, 
the the thing the thing that I that I think about though is is that sometimes I mean we live I like the data stuff and I live in this and so it is one of those things to me is how that communication comes out to people one of the things that strikes me very quickly is people don't make the distinction between elementary school high school middle school they see that as something that they can tangibly touch when you talk about the department of it i totally get the indirect the indirect costs of that in a lot of ways they see that as administrative bloat instead of it has value and it and it touches important factors of that so i guess as you're thinking about how to communicate that in, in the long-term sort of way is how do you how do you talk about that so people don't get the wrong impression of what department means versus high school it's easy for people to get their minds around high school elementary middle school it's a little harder to get your idea around what department means per se so, but this is this is really good stuff. Can I, Jeff? I think too. The great, it's a great point. And I think to Dr. Stanford's earlier point. So, capacity too. I think can also not just mean headcount in the building, but how long it's used. You know, um, how many shifts of community activity or other things are used. I mean that. So, I, I think we've got a ways to go. And that was part of my question. I would, and I really appreciate feedback from from our from our community um, members on. And what would be helpful because I think what would come here regularly, you know, maybe it's not every it's not every month, but you know, what would come here regularly so that there's some oversight of Operation Fix It and that we're seeing that in out, you know, um, where those funds go. And then but also as we think about we all I mean we we know as a board, for example, that um, high school decisions have to be made. We hear from administration that um, you know, students are, are learning in different ways. It's sitting folks in a classroom is not how they're learning. So what does that mean? You know, there are a lot of other decisions that go way outside of mm -hmm. no, these numbers. But uh, what would lay, what would identify this? So like up there right now, Briggs, my understanding is Briggs is, has crowding issues. You know, it's, it's not, it's, it's, it's over capacity. But then there are others on there that aren't. Um, you know, so how do we think about that to relieve that, to address those issues, that, you know, short term, medium term, long term? Mm -hmm. and, and it provides data, how can we provide value so that everybody has that decision making data and um, not just, just saving a buck one year, mm -hmm. but making good longer term decisions too. Yeah, I think it'd be important also when we speak capacity to make sure we explain the capacity like you stated, not just people, but also um, we talked to them doing the FMP like Champion Middle School, when you look at the numbers based on um, the capacity based on high school facilities, when you look at the programming, it's, it's different because of the, of the student to staff ratio. So I think it's important as, as you talk about how we tell yeah. that message. Again, I think that's important how we, we get that information out as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I echo that. I, I think that the data is good if you do something with it. So the data to me would mean um, here's our operational costs and utilities. I mean, if every dollar that I could save in, in water cost or heating cost or electric costs, then I can give a buck back to the superintendent to invest in our in, in our kids, right? Yeah. And and I think that's the, the that's the message and that's why we're that's why we do these studies. And and I know that there's a lot of folks that do this. So we got big facilities, I mean if they're bank for instance, we've got this stuff we talk about a lot from a, from our property management group. So we've got uh, all kind of facilities all across our twelve state footprint. And we look at these costs. We've got other companies that come in and help us manage some of the data. They help us buy uh, some electric. I'm sure, I'm sure I, and I don't know the depth of what you have for buying electric or buying gas or how you do that, but, uh, but I think those are also important considerations. So there's a, lot of, there's a lot of resources out there that could probably help us manage these costs down if we wanted to get into that. Okay. Uh, real quick, I just want to, I want to thank everyone here that came in today, yeah. our staff, and also Jasmine Harris, who is a Northland grad and a community activist and you know, has a lot of volunteering in Northland and really cares about our schools and gives back a lot and just, you know, grateful that we have people from the public that are coming in to find these committees what this is all about, you know, not just internally, it's, it's also for us, for the community as well, to understand what we're doing as a school district. It's very, very important that we're always being accountable and transparent, so just wanted to 
thank you for, for coming in today. And, and she sat we're, in the row, too. <laughs> <laughs> and I read everything. <laughs> if we're wrapping up, I want to piggyback on Mr. Jordan's mm -hmm. uh, comment and say, you know, to Maurice and his team and to Stan and his team, Great job. Mm -hmm. Great job. I mean, this Great is a job. lot of good information that you presented to us this afternoon. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, so where do we go next with this? Oh, I thought we were just done. <laughs> <laughs> it was on a shelf we like all these other reports. I think yeah. some of those pieces that we sort of talked about, and I think we're going to have to regroup again. You know, uh, continue talking about, you know, there's... You know, for this year, are we able to put together something for the 18, 19, looking at 18 and 19 uh, year being the next sort of, you know, school year coming up? Is there a way that we're able to put together sort of what the district's plans are for the PI, what the district's plans are for the sale of buildings, uh, and put that into sort of like a, you know, a process that we have for the non-personnel personnel budget? You know, what does that look like is, is what I would like to say. And, and if I may, Mr. Chairman, we may want to think about, you know, what are those, well, first of all, let's, you know, can we, can we chunk this out into bite-sized pieces mm -hmm. over the next four to five months while we're going through the budget process and prioritize those bite-sized pieces to align with the budget yes. so that we can, you know, make that analysis of where we can uh, save dollars uh, to help us with the budget process. Mm -hmm. no, I think that makes sense. So speaking of a bite-sized process, Upcoming, in a fairly soon fashion, we need to look at bus replacement. Yeah. And we've been studying various options for that. Debt funding, but with the bonds, leasing, some sort of bank financing, just various options to do that. Um, but we What's that? It's an Uber. Uber, <laughs> Uber. We're, we're going we're to we're gonna have a need to, to make a purchase here soon. And um, I'm meeting next week with some folks and talking to the banks. Um, but we're going to have an idea now. We're, we're looking at funding it out of the um, new half mil dollars. So mm -hmm. 4.4 million. And how much of that? do we want to obligate towards? Because that is a life cycle replacement issue. Yeah. Um, but this is a pretty sizable, you know, probably close to $8 million purchase that we may fund over a 10 year period that will we'll take some of those. And we're not gonna be able to wait for a four or five month process to prioritize the entire operation of what mm -hmm. we're doing. We're gonna need to buy these buses here because we need to get them replaced. There are some expenses that we're incurring that we don't need to with some of the really older buses. So we're going to put together that financing plan here probably within the next 30 to 60 days. Uh, have we made the commitment to purchase? Have we looked at other options besides purchasing, like leasing? Oh, lease yeah. We're, we're looking at leasing. Okay. And most of, most of that is... It is essentially a lease purchase. Yeah. When we're not leasing and then you walk away after 10 years and they take okay. the buses. We're not looking at that. Okay. We're looking at various lease structures that, you know, um, do you do a short-term lease and then take it out later with debt? Do you, you know, the advantages of, of leasing is, is it's pretty, it's it's quicker, it's it's a little bit simpler, um, but you have a tendency that that cost can rise over, over or the, the back years. end. You know, yeah. Do we do a five-year lease or a 10-year lease? Do we do a, a lease with an upfront payment but a balloon at, or a balloon at the end? You know, how do how do we want to look at that? Long-term financing locks in rates. We've got tax code changes that are coming down the road. Mm -hmm. So that's all going on in the background to try and see the most efficient and cost-effective way to get about 70, 71. 71 buses in here before next school year. Well, I, I would two things. So one, I'd like to see what we, I know we talked about buses and levy planning. I'd like to see what that was so we compare that to this. And second, you know, I know this is, it might, I mean, let's look at that because I know we talked about it. but. That's a big. That's a big deal. So it's going to take a few months to decide. You know, if we make commitments on permanent improvement funding use to go to deferred maintenance, I don't want to. I don't want to shift that around. I don't want to. I, I want to make sure we're not deciding on a whim where we're going to do something different. Well, it's, not, it's not on a whim, and it's not taking money from deferred maintenance. Okay. See, keep in mind that the whole deferred maintenance was addressed by the operation fix it. 
0.84 Well, roughly 0.84 mils, but 125 million in a bond issue. But this is life cycle replacement that we're considering. The current improvement considering. fund was also to go to that, and then also, you know, with the this, uh, the proceeds from the sale of those buildings, you know, making sure we earmark that. I'm not saying not to replace right. buses. I'm I'm just saying like that's a it's a big deal. It's a big issue. This is the first I've heard of this, and maybe I don't mean to say never heard of it because you might have said, "Hey, I'd like to see what we said during the levy planning." And second, you know, just understand it more. It just yeah. all of a sudden it's like emergency, and I don't know how it becomes an emergency with 71 buses. Um, I didn't say it was an emergency. It was oh. just, it's just. Totally I think we we talked previously well, you about. Said, it bus sounded like it was like you had to, we have to do this and decide right now. And so I just want to make sure we're deciding it in the larger context and not because we just suddenly have to, that's all. Well, I'm, I'm a little bit concerned because I've, I'm sensing that the, you're going to want to see how this fits into the overall picture of, of all of the deferred maintenance issues and or life cycle. I mean, we're not, I don't know that we're going to have a 10 or 15 year life cycle plan develop before we're going to need to buy the buses. I mean, there's going to, I, I'm just saying, I don't, I mean, they were. Well, let's, let's get some more information together and figure, I mean, figure, but again, I just want to make sure mm -hmm. it, we're being consistent with what we said during the yeah. election. And I know we had bus discussions, but that's, that's all. Yeah, I think we just need to pull together the information first and and see what we have and be able to move forward from there. Yeah. This is all really good stuff. We're really setting the table for how we can start looking into the future with all these different various areas. You know, there is a lot of need and I'm just really happy and really appreciative of all the hard work and let's just keep on pushing forward. These are really great tools for us to make decisions, look into the future, look at the needs of the district in the short term and in the long term Absolutely. for things like this, for things that we promised. Uh, that we need to make sure that we keep our promise to period. Um, and, you know, what are we planning on for the future? And how does it break out from the PI piece? How does it, how does it break out from the, um, the 0.84 piece that also flows into that line item? How does how do all these work? And let's start thinking about that for this committee and the board next year, five years, same way that we're doing the personnel budget. And um, start thinking of that sort of, those sort of parameters. Um, and it'll, it'll help us. It's going to help us internally. Uh, it's going to help us as a district to, so we're not stuck buying, you know, hundreds of buses at once. That's not a very wise decision. Um, you know, I don't know what's happened in the past, but, you know, I will say this, you know, what we're doing here is, you know, you don't see other school districts doing this sort of level of planning that we're doing. And for whatever reason, uh, you know, again, it's a testament to, to this district and to our staff. And so you know, I'm just very pleased and I'm just happy that we're going down in this direction and you know, I'm looking forward to seeing what's coming next. All right. Do we have any more business before the committee? Go. Yep. I just want to add that Reginald, you know, our previous citizen member, he would have loved these spreadsheets. So thank you. Oh, this yeah. is, you know, he got yeah. uh -huh. uh -huh. so this the analysis happened, so thank you. All right. With that said, do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Same uh, opposed, same sign. We are adjourned. Thank you very much, folks. Thank you. Yeah. Absolutely. See you next time.